everyone, and welcome to episode 37 of the Bucks UK TV podcast. That's right, 37, the same number as the Super Bowl that we won before we were all clamoring around about 55. 37 was the original. And um, speaking of the original, we are joined by Scott Smith. He's, uh, he's been with the Bucks ever since the, uh, the internet was in black and white. And if you want to talk about Super Bowl 37, he's the one that quite literally wrote the book. So we are so delighted to have you, Scott. Thank you for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. I really appreciate it. Uh, this should be a lot of fun. And um, with Scott, we've also got Phil and Gary helping me to ask the questions. Right. Um, before we start, though, we just want to say thank you, because ever since we've all been Bucks fans, you were the one delivering us the news, whether it was on the NFL, you know, the Bucks subsite on the NFL or on Bucks.com or on the podcasts. Kind of, yeah, you have been the voice of the Bucks for us. So it's, it's really nice to be able to... Uh, share you with our members and put some questions to you so we'll, we'll go easy with you well thank you very much i've never had anything but overwhelmingly positive experiences with anybody from bucks uk so we're so happy to have the incredible incredible group of fans for this team you don't even know oh thank you no we do we we, we feel so welcome and i love it. it's very very special um so let's start at the beginning then um you're from st louis uh, hopefully I've said that right rather than St. Louis, because you've got to remember I've got to put my best, my best um, accent on. Um, college at Northwestern, and via a stop or two, you've landed at the Bucks, let's be generous, about 30 years ago. Um, so tell us, yeah, just start from the beginning and say how Scott Smith wound up in Tampa working for the Bucks. Well, you're, uh, it is St. Louis with the S on the end, just <laughs> so you know. Uh, I was at Northwestern um, studying communications. Uh, I also worked the full three years there in the sports information department, which is basically the equivalent equivalent of an NFL team's PR department. And uh, but I'm about halfway through my senior year, pretty much done with all my credits. And I really had no idea what I was going to do. And then the Kansas City Chiefs, um, who usually got their PR interns from local schools around them, decided they wanted to branch out a little bit that year, which was awfully fortuitous for me. And one of the places they sent a flyer that got put up on the bulletin board in their office was Northwestern. So I answered it, got an interview when they came through Chicago and got that internship. And that's how I ended up in the NFL. Uh, you know, an internship ends, it ended in February. I uh, moved from there to Arizona um, to live with my dad for a little while. And I had sent out before I left the Chiefs uh, resumes to all the teams and was surprised within a month to get a call from the Bucks. And I guess you'd say the rest is history at that point. And we're very grateful it is history. And we're surprised you didn't little go into the spittoon when you mentioned the Kansas City Chiefs. So, uh, uh, so Gary and Phil have got some questions for you. Then we'll just do a little bit of club business in the middle. And we've got some, then we'll end with some members questions, sort of quick fire style. So, uh, Gary, over to you. Thanks, Kieran. Uh, hi, Scott. Um, don't worry, not my annual question about trick plays. <laughs> you've been kind enough to answer a couple of times. Um, now, you know... As a writer and in recent years as a presenter um what appeals to you about those two individual roles that's a good question so i said i got to the bucks and the rest is history but i actually started in pr uh, obviously there was no buccaneers.com yet um but i found out through that time that you know i really enjoyed the writing part of pr writing feature stories even the media guides yearbooks things like that and I didn't really love the part where you had to get players and coaches to agree to do interviews because lots of times they don't want to do them. And so you're sort of the bad guy and with a bad message in the middle. So I gravitated towards the writing. And when, um, and when we did launch a website, I asked if I could take that over. And so that's when I became basically a full-time writer. And then about five or six years later, it became clear that video was going to be um, growing, of growing importance on your websites. Uh, to this point where I think it's probably more important in the written material, probably all told. Um, so they asked, Hey, can you go on camera? And uh, I had done speech and debate in high school. So I thought I probably could, and it worked out. And um, I enjoy the writing part just because I think that's the one thing that I actually have a specific talent for in this world. Uh, the stuff on camera is nice too, though, because you can get a big bang out of a lot less effort. It may take a while to uh, write a story about the draft, but Casey and I can get on and talk about it. And, you know, 15 minutes later, I think we've given the fans some information that they can digest in a different way, but it doesn't take up as much time in preparation. For me, the people that produce the videos now, they have to do all the work. Mm. Uh, that's good. Um, you, um, you're known for liking a stat as well. 
uh, and you clearly put a lot of research into your articles. Can you give us a, a rough breakdown of the, the time researching, the time writing? Uh, and I was going to ask you if you really enjoyed both those aspects, but you've already answered that. So um, can I ask you if you've got an all time favorite Buccaneer stat? I do. As I'll start there at the end. Um, and, and this I didn't have to go look this one up as, uh, I, as soon as I heard the question. I, I, I've always said this is my favorite Buck stat in the 2002 Super Bowl season. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers allowed all their opposing quarterbacks to finish with a combined passer rating of 48.4 with 10 interceptions. I mean, 10 touchdowns allowed and 31 interceptions. Ryan Leaf, you guys remember Ryan Leaf, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, he had a career uh, pass rating of 50.0, which uh, basically means we, in turn, we turned all of the collective quarterbacks against us that year into Ryan Leaf because the the pass defense was just so good. And, and and to be honest, there were a lot of stiffs. There were a lot of guys that only saw one star. We had some weird quarterback matchups that year, like Jeff Burris in Chicago, Randy Fasani, guys like that. But in the playoffs, we still only allowed a 45-9, which is actually a little bit better passer rating. And um, and that was against guys like Jeff Garcia and, and um, Donovan McNabb and the reigning MVP that year, Rich Gannon. So I don't think uh, the NFL has seen a pass defense like that since for sure mm. and i don't know if i answered the first part of that question i can go back if you want uh, the amount of time that you spend researching and writing yeah you know i've always been a numbers guy um so uh, i love that part of it i keep like 55 different offshoot stat files based on the stuff the bucks do like you know records and under certain circumstances and so on and um so some of that is just a matter of knowing where the information is and i can get it quickly sometimes for the things when you're looking up more elaborate notes, it does take a little while, but I actually, I actually really enjoy that part of it. I don't know if I could put a percentage on it. it just kind of depends on what stat you're looking for. Not really any one particular stat. I'm just curious to the, the amount of time that you spent researching it and, and writing it. Uh, interesting. You mentioned Ryan Leaf. Um, I remember watching Ryan Leaf in a preseason game for the Bucks in Atlanta mm -hmm. quite a few years ago. He had one, one season or one training camp with the Bucks, as I recall. Yeah, I think that was the year. I'm sorry. I think that was the year where John Gruden was collecting all the quarterbacks. He had like seven <laughs> of them at one point. We had, we had the rights to Jake the Snake, but that never came about. So, yeah, he was trying just about everything at that point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, talking of quarterbacks, uh, you're based at, obviously, at the Advent Health Training Center normally. And early last year, you must have heard rumors that a certain Tom Brady was going to come to Tampa. So what were your initial feelings when that was confirmed? Well, my, my initial feelings when I heard that that was actually a possibility, like in February, were no way. There, there's no way Tom Brady's leaving New England. I didn't believe it for a minute. I figured it was all posturing. Obviously, I came to be uh, educated on that. And, and from that point on, it was just kind of a, it was a weird experience because at the beginning, you think there's no way we're getting Tom Brady. And then it accelerated pretty rapidly to the point where you're, you're looking at your coworkers going, are we really getting Tom Brady? And then because we don't announce things until they're fully signed and so on, there was a period where you and me and everybody knew, but it wasn't official yet. We hadn't said anything. And then on March 20th, he actually signed. And it was, it, it was and remains surreal. Um, the only unusual part for, for, for a lot of us is that Tom Brady has been the quarterback of this team for a year now and I've never actually met him because of all the COVID-19 protocols so um, you can see today I'm working at home I am back in the office for the most part but um, I still don't have clearance to go in the same area where the players in the locker rooms and so on so it's been an unusual experience to think that we got Tom Brady and it made all the difference in the world the plan worked to perfection unbelievably and yet I haven't actually met him. <laughs> that's incredible that's yeah. incredible thanks Scott that's uh, that's it from me I'll pass you over okay. to Phil. Thanks, Gary. Scott, my friend, can can you put into words what it's been like in the last twelve months? You know, with from the signing of Tom Brady, dealing with this global pandemic, to winning the Super Bowl in Tampa, it must have been like a whirlwind. It was just one unbelievable development after another. You know, and some of them not in a good way with the the pandemic. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, you just you would if you wrote this as a story and tried to get it past an editor, it probably would be. Um, redlined quite a bit because there's just too unbelievable um that said 
because of the remove of a couple degrees by the way we had to work for much of the year um as an example i didn't travel we worked in i worked in the radio booth or the control booth where the radio was doing the broadcasts during the regular season uh and worked from there uh which was re- weird because i'd been to every game home or away for like 28 years so it was an unusual experience and there was a little bit of a remove there so it was very very exciting um but for me from from just a straight standpoint of how exciting it was it was it was, it was, it was a little dampened a little bit uh as compared to the first super bowl but um yeah can i put into words how incredible it was i don't think i can and when the bucks came out of the bye week at seven and five we we're just sitting there saying how many do we have to win to be sure you know i thought we had to win three to be sure i thought two would be risky it'd be great if we could run the table but we usually said it like that well it would be great if we run the table but then everything clicked and they ran the table and it just it just steamrolled to the end and it was it was easy to believe every game that happened along the way, but it's a little weird to look back and go, we won eight games in a row and basically we're scoring like 35 points a game in that space. Yeah. Because mm. uh, the other way you say you've, you've, um, you've visited most of the NFL stadiums in, in your time with the book. Which, which is your favorite stadium uh, to go to? And uh, is there any particular, particular game you can remember, by, you know, going to? Well, let me say. Going to again. well um I would say the stadium that is most fun to visit is probably Lambeau Field. Um, it, it really it does have that mystique that everybody talks about. And it's, and it's, it's sometimes it's cold, which is cool because we don't get a lot of that. Um, I've liked a couple of times I've got to go back to Kansas City since that was my NFL home. And I very much remember uh, the game in Kansas City, I think it was 2008, where we had the greatest comeback in franchise history. Uh, you know, we got down early to, I can't even remember their quarterback's name, but it was a guy that hardly ever played and he caught a touchdown pass on a trick play. And I think we threw a trick touchdown pass with Ernest Graham and we had um, Smith, uh, the little, the little kick returner who was so good for a couple of years. I can't think of his first name at the moment. Clifton, but, um, Clifton. Clifton right. Clifton. He, he had the big return to spark the rally and we won that game in overtime. So that was cool. As for this year, um, I don't think our destinations are all that exciting, but we had a lot of fun a couple of years ago going back to LA for the first time since like my first or second year here. And it'll be fun to go back there again, I think. I think New England should be interesting going yeah, back I, there. I didn't pick the easy low hanging fruit, did I? <laughs> um, you produced uh, this, that wonderful series, which we were like in the current. Um, are there any plans to do any more episodes this year? Hundred percent. Yeah, that's a very well loved project. And just to be clear, I don't produce that. I, I should give credit to where it's due, particularly to the lead on the project, Stephen Lynch. But you're right; it's fun. It's every one of those has been phenomenal. That's been good. Fans ask us all the time. I get asked mailbag questions like, "When's the next slice?" And they do take a lot of time. And sometimes they're covering, you know, things that that are drawn out. So you're you're spending a lot of time amassing all the footage and, and interviews and, and so on but uh when they're done with them they're fantastic i agree with you completely and yes there will be more of those this year i don't know the timetable but the answer is yes and on, and on a personal question my last question is are you writing another book i don't know about how many details i'm allowed to give out at this moment but uh, <laughs> it's not going to be the same as that which was the the biggest and most difficult project I've ever worked on, um, which was well worth it in the end, but um, mm. probably can't get into the details beyond that, but you could say I'm doing some work on that right now. Hey, exclusive. Uh. There you go, an exclusive. <laughs> exclusive. It uh. wasn't a no, that's all we needed to hear. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned the, yeah, the mailbag and, and how you're answering questions in that. And, you know, we've talked about your love of stats and it, it's clear when you read the SS mailbag column, you're, your 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 love for the club and and the analysis of it just sort of drips off the page it's it's really compelling reading and i love how it almost takes you halfway through the article to start answering the questions um <laughs> but kind of but just thinking you know back back in the day um you know before ss mailbag we had this gentleman answer man and um you know he gave us the benefit of his wisdom and you know we are respecting your i mean his um secret identity um you know how is answer man these days is he enjoying retirement he's Might well into retirement yeah. he's well into retirement that's true and um he still looks fine back finally at the days uh when he was uh for a year or two he was kind of a pirate looking guy and then he was a superhero and um we even did some videos where the answer man was um sort of blacked out but he answered the questions um 
Yeah, the the fun part about Answer Man, that column was uh, whoever wrote it really got to I got to get into that character. And it's it's the it's one of the times in my career where I've had a chance to throw in a little bit of humor, which I don't know how good of a humor writer I am, but it was fun to do at the time. Um, the yeah, it's a little bit more of a straightforward more corporate type of feel with the current mailbag, but uh, the answer man years were a great experience. That's for sure. Those, those think, articles took forever though. I'm, I'm told. Well, that, yeah, that's right. And I remember that's kind of why he, uh, he went into retirement a little bit because when he wasn't jumping tall buildings, he was probably got his head in a lot of books for a long time. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Okay. So we've just got a little bit of our club news. First of all, our congratulations to one of our newer members. I think he only joined up in February, didn't he, Phil? Yep, I joined So, Ben Carter, well done to you. You won our draft competition this year. Uh, for everyone else's benefit, Ben correctly picked the positions that the Bucks were going to draft in rounds one to three. Um, he was the only person that got all of the positions exactly right, although there were a couple of people cursing how NFL.com may or may not class edge people as linebackers or rushers and whether a particular lineman's a guard or a tackle at college or versus where they're going to be in the pros. So uh, that's, that's going to keep uh, Ben in Bucks merch for a good time to come. Um, a quick obligatory uh, thing, if Alex will bash me over the head if I don't ask you to press the subscribe button and put the thumbs up and press the bell uh, and follow us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and of course, we have to give our thanks to Bucks Report also uh, for their help in promoting our podcast. It's really nice uh, that we get to go on their show and uh, later in the year, we're going to have come, some of them coming on our, our show as well. Uh, do make sure you head over to BucksUK.org and renew if you're in the UK and you're a Bucks fan and you're not yet a member, why ever not? Uh, without any further ado then, Scott, we've got some quick fire questions uh, from our members for you. I think we've got six questions uh, and we'll take you through those. Uh, okay, so Scott, um, before we go on to our members' questions, we thought we might just like to show you this <laughs> excerpt from the, uh, the 93 Media Guide. Who's that good looking guy in the middle? <laughs> That guy has very dark hair, doesn't he? He does. He looks very it happy. It didn't last long. That was my second year. And wow. probably, I mean, if you look at that, I'm right below Tim Ruskell, who was pretty high up in the personnel. I don't remember exactly what his title was then. So there was so little staff then that even I'm right next to, you know, the big decision makers up. And now they got us, now everybody's in different sections. But I think we had about 15 people working there at the time. If you could give that Scott some advice, what would you say to him? You know, I would, it took that Scott a little longer than it should have to understand um, that people um, helping you with something you may have not done correctly is not criticism that you should get upset with, but uh, they're trying to help you. And uh, I, I did learn that lesson and, and, um, and have no problem with it now, but I think I was a little bit hot headed back then and, and uh, a little, a little quick with the trigger. And I, I would, I would, I would maybe wouldn't say anything, but I grumble a little bit when somebody pointed out a mistake I had made. Uh, but all those people are trying to do is help you. So but it's probably come full circle I, now because you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the senior guy, you're the senior writer, the senior editor, <laughs> and, and the media team is growing every day. That's right. Okay, so on to our questions from our members. Uh, the first one is from Pete at the top. Of all the seasons you've covered, which ones stand out as being the most enjoyable? Well, I hate to. Um, Oh, good. Which ones? I can name a couple of them hmm. because I, I hate to be obvious about it, but the 2002 Super Bowl season was just an incredible ride um, from beginning to end. Uh, the, uh, you know, I don't, probably don't have to enumerate that that much. I did really like 1997 uh, to be there. I'd only been there five years, but I certainly already knew and felt the weight of how much this franchise had, how long they'd been down. And so to be there when it got turned around, especially because it was Tony Dungy that did it. And it was just, it was great to watch that. You know, we, we had come on strong at the end of 96, but who knows if that was going to mean anything. And then to come out with five straight wins and, and, uh, you know, to see all of Tony's work put in really work out was, was, was very, very enjoyable. Brilliant. Agreed. Uh, which of the two Super Bowl winning teams do you think would win if they played each other? Oh. Now we asked Simeon Rice this question. He didn't have to think very long. Of course not. <laughs> yeah, I know what Simeon would say. I have tried to answer this question before, and it is really, really hard. Um, you know, in the playoffs, especially in the Super Bowl, our defense was playing very, very well. Um, I, would, I would put the defensive performance of this year right up there with the Super Bowl defensive performance of the first one. Um, 
because I mean, well, the first one had the has a still standing records of like five interceptions and and three uh, pick sixes. So they've got that on their side of it. But there were 21 points allowed, not all of it on offense. But uh, this team took probably the best quarterback and best offense in the NFL and completely shut it down uh, and had, you know, set a record for how many times they pressure the opposing quarterback. And those two things are pretty even. You can't say that our current defense is, is to the level of the, the one in 02 at this point, because that defense had his historical numbers and has already three and should have maybe one or two more players in the hall of fame. So I got to give the edge to the defense on the other one. You know, the current offense is, is clearly better than the O2 offense, even though that offense did pretty well in the postseason. It wasn't, it was probably middle of the pack, if not a little lower during the regular season. And I think just because the defense of this year is so good paired with the clear advantage of the offense this year, I probably, I don't feel good about it, but I'd probably go with uh, Super Bowl 50 over Super Bowl 3017. Just more, you know, across the board, I think. Nothing to do with the fact that those guys are still in the building where you work. <laughs> <laughs> well, so is Shelton Quarles. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But he's far too nice to, to be in your face. He's very nice. So our uh, next question is from Phil. What are the most enjoyable and rewarding parts of your job? Well, the, the easy answer again is when we win, because uh, I don't put in the type of work that players and coaches do. And, you know, and it's such a payoff for them when you win after all that work, but you know, we all do, we all were, are working for what we hope is a common cause. And it, it just makes it everything you're doing more enjoyable when you're winning, but that's probably pretty obvious. I would say um, in a smaller sense um, as a writer, when you come up with some turn of phrase that you really like that just comes to you, that's always a, a nice, it's usually a little moment alone at your desk. So it's not like you're celebrating or anything, but that's nice. And then um, also on the number side of it, if I can be the first one to, to dig up what becomes an interesting note that a lot of people put eyes on and use, I, I enjoy that as well. So those are some things. Brilliant. Uh, a question from Kevin. Uh, if you weren't doing your current job, which other role at the Buccaneers would you like to do? I would like to be, I would want to do something on the, on the football side. You know, there's football side and there's business mm -hmm. or admin, whatever you want to call it side. Um, being on the football side kind of gets you more in that inner circle. And um, also, you know, not to be too crass about it, but there, there's a lot of perks on that side uh, that would be nice, like um, playoff bonuses and things like that. Uh, if I could work on the football, I don't obviously have the football knowledge to be a scout or anything like that, but uh, somebody that sort of helps run the football administration back there um, with Mike Greenberg and, and Jason Light and all those people, maybe a, a role similar to what Shelton Quarles is doing, um, where I wouldn't necessarily have to be able to break down a, a, a prospect, but I could help everything run. And, and then you'd sort of be right there in the middle, finding out things as they're happening rather than when they decide to make it public. So I, I think it'd be fun to be more in the inner circle like that. Yeah, people don't appreciate that there's the business of football as well. You know, there's <laughs> a lot of the administration and the hard work that goes with that absolutely I, I just thought you might be wanting to throw easy ups with the receivers or something like that <laughs> well if i had the skills to play i would definitely want to play <laughs> so uh from david uh how has your role as a writer been affected by the growth of social media in recent years in a big way in a real big way um twitter being the biggest part of it because basically twitter has been the way uh that news is announced now so um just as an example uh, before Twitter and before a lot of this social media, let's say I'm, I'm in a press conference and um, and the coach says this high profile player is going to go on injured reserve, which we didn't know until then. That was the news. Well, I have to wait for the press conference to end. I have to go upstairs, transcribe the quotes, put it in the story and then post it before I can get the, the news out. Now everybody is sitting in that press conference. And as soon as he says it, oh, blah, blah, blah is going on injured reserve. So it is nice uh, to have a way to get news out immediately. So whatever the circumstances are, you aren't falling behind other reporters. I think that's the biggest thing, probably. I think as, as fans, the fact that we can now see the press conferences has been a, a sort of revolutionary extra exposure to, to the sport that, you know, we never used to have before. How's the sound? Are you getting the questions well when you're listening to the, because that's well, I, this, this year is probably exceptional because of the whole COVID Zoom thing. And that's it worked true. out that I won't name members of the press, but they need to know, you know you're on mute and uh, all of that sort of stuff. <laughs> right. Uh, and then from Tim, our last question for you. What is the buzz like now post-draft and free agency? And the, what are the biggest challenges to repeating as Super Bowl champions? And he did say, bar a Tom Brady injury. Okay. 
well, injuries as a, as a whole would, would be one of the main answers to that second question. And you can't really know or control that. So you, we got pretty lucky in that regard overall last year. I would say the buzz in the building, I think the only thing you have to worry about is being a little too confident um, because what would, what has happened to make this team any less of a Super Bowl contender than it was, you know, a couple months ago when it won the whole thing, we've re-signed everybody. Um, and, you know, lots of times people sort of sarcastically these days give that off season award, the, you know, the best team, the best off season. And uh, lots of times that's sarcastic because we have seen teams try to uh, build superstar teams in the, uh, in free agency. And we have seen most of the times it doesn't work out, but that's not really the situation the Buccaneers are in right now. So when they're getting lauded for a great off season, it's because they kept all of those people. Those are all known commodities and yeah, pl players can improve or decline, but I think, for the most part, our players are probably in a position to be at least as good as they were last year. Um, you worry about the older guys maybe declining a little bit, but I think they probably have a year or two left in them. And, um, and you know, we have a lot more – Tom Brady and all his people on offense have a lot more of a connection now than they did a year ago at this time. And I don't know how much offseason work we're going to get, but we should get some preseason games, another training camp. And at this point um, – there's no reason to believe that the Buccaneers shouldn't be able to start better than they did last year. And if you can, I mean, we were three and one, don't get me wrong, but you know, the offense was a little shaky early on. If you can really get on a roll early um, and, you know, just have again, all that confidence building in your locker room. Uh, I, I don't see any reason why. Uh, so that it would, you know, you wouldn't be prime contenders again. Um, challenges against it again, injuries are always a challenge for any team, maybe overconfidence a little bit. I might've just been uh uh, showing how maybe we are a little too confident you, got, you have to guard against that but I think the bigger answer and the way a coach would probably answer it is everything absolutely everything is going to be a challenge to it because winning a Super Bowl is so incredibly hard that to have done that last year was a, the the effect of overcoming a whole lot of challenges uh, some that other teams shared like the COVID stuff and and some that were specific to the Buccaneers and uh, they came, overcame all of that and better than anybody else obviously in the NFL last year and it's just no guarantee that that's going to happen again. So absolutely everything is a big obstacle to a repeat. But if you're going to pick one team, you know, every team should be thinking that. But one team that surely can be confident going into the year is the Buccaneers. It's been really pleasing to see uh, all the various power rankings and predictions because this time last year, the Bucs were nowhere and everyone's got us number one. So, you know, that's, that's the target on your back, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Some of them have Kansas city number one, which is understandable, but you know, I think the defending champ should be number one until proven otherwise, but. Brilliant. Well, we're almost out of time. So Phil and Gary, if you've got anything last you want to say or add, and then, then we'll just come back to you, Scott, for a, for a message to our members. Okay. Uh, just, just for me to um, reiterate what Kieran said at the top of the show, uh, Scott, just to thank you for the uh, all the work you do. I mean, over there, you're our eyes and ears uh, in terms of uh, the Buccaneer news. So, so you know, thank you very much, and and keep it up. <laughs> Uh, I'd just like to say, we go back a long way, Scott, and I just want to say thank you for all the support you've given this club over the years, you know, we're, I think we're 30 how many years old this year, and uh, you've been with us all the way, so it's been great, thank you very much indeed, look forward to seeing you soon, anyway. <laughs> thank you, Phil and Gary, and, and also Kieran, um, uh, you know, it, it's actually a privilege to do these things, uh, to have had the opportunity to, as you said, be eyes and ears for people, for the team. It's, it's a hundred percent an honor and a privilege. And um, I would never have guessed 29 years ago that I'd still be with the team, first of all, and in a role like this where I do get to help disseminate information and, and help Bucks fans know what's going on. So uh, again, just like I said, it's, it's a hundred percent a privilege and I'm, I'm very blessed to, to still be doing this. Brilliant, Scott. Thank you very Thanks, much uh, to all our members. Thank you for watching again. Make sure you renew and uh, Phil, Gary, and Scott, we'll see you all soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.